Now it kind of looks like we're driving into the eye of the storm because that's where we're headed, right over there where that storm is. But that's the uh, wilderness area that's back over that ridge right there. And uh, we're gonna go over and check it out anyway. I mean, worst thing is we can get there and then the weather could be gnarly and we can always turn around and come back. But um, looks like there's a window tomorrow morning to fish and then also tomorrow afternoon. And then Wednesday morning is gonna look looking pretty good. Then I'm gonna come back on Wednesday and gonna go fish with a buddy of mine down uh, south of Leadville. So. Uh, we'll hope the weather holds and I mean if there's a little bit of rain that's okay just as long as we don't get tracked up at the lake because I don't want to be up at those high elevations and have this thunderstorm roll through but it looks like it kind of looks like there's some white white breaks behind the the storm front here so I think we'll be all right so we're gonna go check it out and see if we can get All right, welcome to my camp here at 10,365 feet. Uh, we're up in the Holy Cross Wilderness area. We're right at the boundary. The boundary's literally right there past my truck. And uh, we're next to this awesome creek that's coming down from a cluster of lakes up there that we're gonna go fly fish for next couple of days. And I got my little girl here with me. What's up, Sierra? What you doing? Having fun running around, haven't you? She's, I don't know, you're just a happy girl. Let's get that over here and check this out. Come on, let's go this way. So this lake here, all right, so it's actually like a little holding reservoir because it, you can tell there's a, there's like a pipe over there that regulates the flow of how much the water is going through and then a pipe on the other side. This is kind of like a little holding tank, but there's fish in here. I was fishing earlier, I got a couple bites, but didn't get any on the line. And I think what it was is they were, they were just kind of small. So the hook that I was using was a little bit bigger. Um, I think they were able to get in there. There's none down in here. There was a few earlier when I came over to this area just to kind of look at the water and see what's up but you know you can obviously tell this is man-made there's a dam right there so like i was saying this is just a little holding reservoir for the water just to kind of you know temper it a little bit and see if they can regulate it before it goes down and gets in the main drainage and then goes into one of the main rivers so we're going to get uh, dinner going here and then i think we're going to crash out kind of early tonight i only i didn't sleep very much i woke up at like 2 a.m i having problems breathing just because my allergies are so bad then also being up at elevation, you know, it doesn't help. And um, last night I woke up at like two and I, I just couldn't go back to sleep because I, I couldn't quite catch my breath. And so that's been happening quite a lot this year with the pollen kick. And it's the pollen stuff will be over here in the high country probably I don't know, in a couple weeks. So I'll be glad when that happens. <laughs> but here, I'll show you real quick where the trail's at in relation to uh, the truck here. So here's the Wilderness Area Trail. Here's the boundary. So we're at Holy Cross. It's actually the first Wilderness Area I went backpacking in. And uh, I had a bear come up to my tent in the middle of the night. So I was camping with my friends, Mark and Brian. And uh, I was real tired from that day's adventures. And I, I remember taking some peanut butter into my truck. All right, I'm sorry, not in my truck, into my, into my tent. And um, I fell asleep with it in there. And I still think, I'm like, oh, I'll, just, I'll snack on this a little bit and then I'll put it back. Well, I fell asleep like immediately. Then in the middle of the night, I heard something in camp that was like kind of, you know, rustling around camp and like breathing heavy and kind of kind of grunting and stuff. And I'm thinking, that's probably not a deer, you know? <laughs> Cause that's, probably, that's why I first thought, I'm like, well, maybe it's like a deer running around or something like that. And then this figure, I could see it cause the moon was out. This figure came right next to my tent and it had this long snout and it pressed it up against the nose so like it pressed his nose or its snout up against the side of my tent and i didn't know what to do and i was freaking out and i saw i was like well i'm just gonna smack this thing and see if that takes off and so i hit it pretty hard and it just like I, it like it like went back and i could i could tell it kind of paused and then it just bolted and i got out and looked and sure enough there were bear prints right there so that was my one encounter with bears and ever since then i've always been really really careful when i'm backpacking just you know, and even with the truck too, just packing up all my food and cleaning my stove all the time. I keep my stove super clean, and uh, just trying to keep the uh, the the food sense down to a minimum because you don't want a hungry bear showing up to your tent or your truck in the middle of the night. Because I mean, even though this is fiberglass and stuff like that, a black bear could still work its way in. It could easily rip open the the uh, slide out extension here. So I'd be in I'd be in rough shape if that happened. But anyway, we're gonna get our night going here. And I don't think I'm gonna film the rest of the night. I think I'm just gonna relax 
eat some dinner, and then we're gonna wake up early in the morning, go up and check out these lakes, and then start jamming all day. What are you doing? What is it, pumpkin? Hmm? What do we got? What are we doing? Want some breakfast? There's stuff right here. There we go. Okay, there's some eggs in there. Some water? There you go, pumpkin. It's a nice morning out here, and uh, the wind today I don't think is going to get any 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 um, any higher than like 10 miles an hour, so it should be really good fishing. And the nice thing about you know the wind is that you, you can always have it at your back if you're going to a lake, and so that's why I like high altitude lake fishing is that even in bad conditions you can find a pocket of water that's still, so you can fly fish with that to your back. Or if the wind's just absolutely crazy, you know I've got that spin casting rod that I just picked up. I used to carry one a long time ago. And when I first hit the road, this is all I used to do, was just hike and fly fish and, and that was it. And then I started doing trail work with the Forest Service and started volunteering for that. I got out of that and now I'm back into this. So I like this a lot better, it's just easier to do. And I found that when I was doing the stuff with the Forest Service, I just got kind of, um, I don't know, I got kind of jaded because all I was doing was picking up trash. And it was every day and I had like 15 trails that I was maintaining for the Forest Service. I was on them all the time. I'd, sometimes I'd do three trails in one day. But ran those trails all, all, all the time and just was picking up trash and I thought, I don't want to do this anymore. And plus, too, I injured my back. Uh, since my foot was in a fixed position and four-wheel low on the gas pedal for so long when I climbed these different 4x4 trails, I ended up developing a condition where my muscles were misfiring in my hip and it was pulling my hip out of alignment. And then I screwed up my back. So I got, got that all squared away with the physical therapist and now I'm feeling great and I figured I might as well start jamming on trails again. So we're gonna, um, I'm gonna just do my dishes really quick here and then we're, we're gonna pack up and then head out. Because today I think the barometric pressure was saying like 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. there was a spike and then again at around noon. So if we can get up there around noon and fish from like noon to one and just kind of scout out the area and just spend the day up there because I want to see what it looks like. Because the other lake that I was going to originally go to is just right over there. I mean it's less than a mile from here. But the thing is it's shaded so much in the morning like I'm looking over there right now and the mountain that covers over area where I would camp is still shaded at this moment and it's just nice having sun in the morning. I mean we're at 10,360 something feet and uh, it's cold you know if you're in the shade in the morning it's definitely chilly but the lake over there is nice too I mean it fishes really well so we'll see I've got a couple days to spend up here and then I'm gonna go hook up with a buddy of mine and we're gonna hike up to another lake in the Mount Massive Wilderness area and go fly fish up there some big cuts on Thursday morning. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is supposed to rain. So try to get in as much fishing as possible in the next couple of days. And then after that, just kind of hunker down at camp and watch Netflix for two or three days and murk a bunch of millennials on Call of Duty. <laughs> All right, let's go fishing. All right, girl, are you ready? Let's get going. Goodbye, campsite. See you in a few. Hey, we got a bridge coming up. Ah, I love these things. These are so much fun to go across. Uh, I'm hoping Sierra, oh yeah, it'll be, it'll be wide enough for Sierra to go. All right, come on, sweetie. We gotta go across the bridge. Good job, sweet fun again.
All right, I wanted to show you all this. We're actually coming up on an avalanche debris field. So you can see all these trees that are downed right here. This is where avalanche came through and ripped all these trees out of the ground. You can see back up in this direction, you know, it kind of came down this gully right here, this, this gulch, and uh, threw all these trees around. <clears throat> You can see them down the little valley down there as well. There's quite a few of them. Wow, that's a big field right there. If you're thinking about the destructive, destructive force to rip all these trees out of their ground by the roots and just toss them all. I mean, there's some big trees back in here. So you'll you'll see this after a, obviously after a winter when there's a bunch of snowfall. I'll be hiking and all of a sudden you'll come across these avalanche debris fields. So, just be crazy to see something like that happen in person. <laughs> At a safe distance, obviously. What you thinking, girl? I'm kind of out of breath, too. <sighs> See another avalanche area here. This one's much smaller. There's still plenty of forest to rip these trees out of here, though. Which is crazy. All right, should be at the lake shortly. All right, now this this avalanche the debris field is huge. This is the sort of stuff that rearranges rivers and stuff like that. I mean, we're gonna track across this, and I don't even know if the trail's cleared, so we may just have to hop over all these trees. But oh no, it looks like somebody's been back here with a saw. Okay, good. Well, this is a huge, huge debris field. Once we get up here, you'll see. <coughs> Just how big these trees are. I mean, these are massive, massive trees. I mean, this sort of carnage is unreal. To be able to see something like this in person, it would just be insane. So, uh, let's see here. See her over here? I have no idea where we're going. Okay, we're gonna have to go this way, babe. Now I want you to be careful, okay? Because I don't want you hurting yourself. So don't jump on anything that you're not supposed to and impale yourself there. All right, this is a pain in the rear. And look how big these trees are. I just uprooted it and just came down this cliff here and just annihilated all these trees. And this this goes on forever. I don't know how if we're gonna if we're gonna be able to get around this. I'm gonna have to go around uh, uh, the top side over here, and then. Cause this area right through here is just crazy. This debris field is huge. We've been working like crazy to get through it. There's no route at all because the trees are so massive and they're stacked on top of each other and we're having to hop all over them. So it's like bouldering, but in a, in a uh, avalanche debris field. And this debris field, I don't know if you can, let me get the shadow see if you can see the full length of it. And this debris field is huge. It goes on forever. And I think our lakes are right over, whoops, right over there. Uh, right over in that section right there. There's a cluster of like five of them, but man, going through this is brutal. And I brought my waders and my, and my wading boots. So it's a little extra weight in the pack. And for first season, or for my first big hike of the season in the high country, this is totally kicking my butt. So hopefully we'll be there soon. <laughs> All right, so we just got to one of the lakes here and yeah, super pretty area. <clears throat> and I saw some fish 
swimming over in this area right here because there's a feeder stream coming in from one of the upper lakes. So I'm going to fish this for a little bit and then we're going to head up to one of some of the upper lakes and check them out after I catch my breath. But this area is absolutely stunning. I am floored. The hike up is awesome. It's a, it's a bit, uh, a bit rocky in some spots. So you got to kind of navigate that, which is uh, not a problem. You just got to kind of take your time. And then that avalanche area was crazy. But other than that, you know, it's a, it's an excellent hike. It's so beautiful back in here. And this, uh, this is a place I'm going to come back back in later this year. And I want to spend about four or five days back up in here, just fishing, hanging out and just doing nothing. This would be great. So we're going to get a line in the water. I think I'm going to spin cast first. So we're going to fly fish the upper lake. Right, so we decided to blow past the lower lake, come to the upper one here. And so we're up here kind of scouting out some places to fish. Um, fancy pass. Oops. It's pretty much sucked in with snow and then Fancy Lake is snowed or is still iced over. So I'm going to go ahead, whoops, definitely dropping through some ice here. But I want to make my way over to the uh, feeder stream that's coming in here and then also throw some flies in there along with some, some of the spin casting. Let's see what I can get. The wind's coming up a little bit, but I'll be protected over here from the, uh, from the wind. So we can still throw a fly, it's not have a problem. So I'm, I'm hoping to catch some big fish in here. I know there's a bunch, bunch of big ones in here, but uh, we'll just kind of see how the day works out. See a bunch of fish rising right here. So I've got this helmet cam, I'm gonna put it on. I forgot my sunglasses like an idiot, so I'm blinded by the sun or the snow. <clears throat> but I think there's a bunch of big brooks all along here. And then all along the other way over there, all the way over to the ice, that's right there. So we're gonna hit all this. Stay, stay close, okay? That's a beaut. What a great looking brook tread. And you can tell it's a brook. You, like I was saying in the other video, if you look at the fins, yeah, it's got the black and the, the red on the fins there. And then the really pretty underbelly, the, the, the kind of, kind of uh, um, what is that? Uh, orange underbelly and then these cool spots. So just, just a, such a beautiful fish. I'm gonna go and put that dude back. Wow, what a pretty guy. You want to come fishing with me over here? Come on, let's go. Come here. All right, I forgot about this little feeder stream that's right here. It's actually a pretty good one that cranks out a bunch of food and I can see a bunch of fish rising kind of all along like, like the trees, like behind those trees right there and then all on the water here. So we're going to try this out for a little bit and see how it works right, out. First cast over here and we got a nice brook trout. Let's get this guy in here. This is a really good looking one. Lots of color. There's another one that's coming over here to check it out and see what's going on. But uh, this guy's beautiful. Oh my gosh. Such pretty colors. These are such good fish to eat too. So here, let me show you real quick what these look like. Really pretty. Really pretty fish. All right. There you go, mister. Oh, there's some big brooks in here. All right, we're gonna have fun fishing this today. All right, I came up here to the upper lake. I'm totally out of breath. The, 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 the scene around here is, is just incredible. I mean, this is like my new favorite area of Colorado. And this area right here, there's tons of brook trout swimming, but uh, the wind's kind of slightly coming out this direction. I've got a, a black ant pattern that I've got on my uh, fly rod. So I think what I'm gonna do is use the spin spin rod and just cast out into these areas. I'm going to try to get it to the ice and then bring the lure off the ice and into the water. So we'll see what we can get. All right, so we got a little guy here. We're going to cook him up. We're going to fry this guy up in some cornmeal and some flour and some cayenne pepper. And uh, we need to get cranking because the storm's coming in. So got my little gal here. We're getting ready to rock and roll. Had a great day fishing, probably fish for, I don't even know what time it is. We fished for a long time. It was awesome. So, uh, we're heading out and uh, we'll see you back at the truck. These clouds are definitely building, so we're booking it back. We measured the brook trout. It's a 10-incher. 
So that'll fit perfect in the 10 inch cast iron skillet. So we're gonna, whew, gonna jam back and make some dinner and go to bed because <laughs> I'm worked. That was a stellar day. Lots of good fishing. And uh, I got this little, little brook trout to take home with us back to camp and cook up. So we're gonna fry that up tonight. But it was an excellent day out here. And this scenery on here, I mean, you can't beat it. It is absolutely unreal. This whole place is amazing. So I'm gonna backpack up here later this summer and just spend a couple of days, maybe like a week up here just hanging out. All right, so I'm here uh, just getting ready to go back down to the truck and I came across some friends that uh, actually follow the channel. Yeah. And they said, what's up? So you guys what's want to say, introduce yourselves real quick to everybody? Hi, Tara. I'm Charlie, hey. Cool? Yeah. yeah, they went fishing this morning too and got fished as well, so. Yeah. Just want to say what's up. What's up? Yeah. You are such a good little girl. We're getting you lots of treats when we get back. Alright, so unfortunately I didn't sleep hardly all last night. My surgically repaired right knee started acting up again. And uh, it was actually started acting up on the way down from the hike yesterday. By the time I got back to the truck, I couldn't really walk again, so I was pretty disappointed with that. And then all night last night, I just had pain in my knee and just just um, just throbbed. And so decided to go ahead and pack up and roll out this morning. I was gonna go up and hit up two more lakes, but with my knee and the way it is, I just don't want to do that. So I'm um, gonna go ahead and head out. And this this four by four trail going down. I didn't film any of it coming up, but it is like straight down. So I think I might put the GoPro out and have it like level. And then have me coming down and show like the angle that I'm coming down because it's it's crazy how steep it is. But um, I had a great time camping here. It was nice to nice to be out of cell range for a while just because uh, you know things are kind of crazy on social media and on in the news and stuff like that. And so it's really nice to come out here. And that that lake, I mean, God, lake. Can you believe how beautiful that that collection of lakes is up there? Just amazing. There's still lots of snow up there too. I mean, that the upper lake, that the top lake in that whole cluster, it was still frozen over solid. So. Um, but we're gonna go hook up with my friend Rick tomorrow and do some fishing. Um, may have to alter our plans. We're planning on doing a pretty big hike into the Mount Massive Wilderness area, but uh, with my knee the way it is, it's not gonna happen. So, gonna adjust our plans a little bit and see if we could drive to a lake or get within close distance of a lake to where I can go flat. Because if I go flat, I'm good, but going downhill is where it bothers me. And that, that uh, has me fearful thinking that it could possibly be a meniscus tear, which I hope it's not, but we'll see. But uh, we're going to head on out. Hey, so check it out. So those people that we met up at the lake yesterday, here's their, here's the, their, their rig. They have the Tacoma with the um, four-wheel camper. They got the Swift model on the back there. And that's real good for a short bed like mine because it's only five and a half feet. So it only sticks out a little bit out at the back. So there's really no, um, no uh, hanging out over the en end. And I mean, you can see the, the difference in, in room. And I've got <laughs> literally none. And then he's got a nice little cabin on the back here. So definitely a cool rig, man. I like, uh, like to set up on that for sure. All right, we're out of here. We went up and just checked Brady Lake and Soparis, just the trailhead, just because I wanted to. And I was kind of disappointed, like the Forest Service, it looks like they kind of paved the road the whole way up. And that's a term that we use in 4x4, which means that they went in and removed all the obstacles. So they took out all the rocks and everything that were in the road and made it real easy to drive up there. And there was a bunch of people up at the trailhead, so I thought, eh. So that's kind of disappointing because that, that trail used to be really hard to get up to. And once you got up there, you know, you're pretty much guaranteed to have the one of the lakes to yourself. So we're going to head into town. Uh, we're going to go to City on the Hill in Leadville and grab a breakfast burrito. They have the best breakfast burritos on the planet. The bacon breakfast burrito is insane. So I'm going to break my diet this morning and go with that since I'm so tired. But uh, like I was saying before, I've been, up, I've been up for nine hours now. It's 10 a.m. So I'm pretty tired. But... Hopefully we'll get some good rest tonight because I still want to go fishing with my buddy Rick tomorrow. So we'll see how that plans out.